Hello. Great. Okay. So we are now out of closed session. The time is 7.03 p.m. In closed session, we took up and discussed legal issues related to a complaint filed by Joseph Casino against Otto Swingler, which complaint alleges violations of city codes sections 2232, 2232B, and 2233. So now that we are back in our open session, we can move on to item two on the agenda, which is the final hearing uh, by Joseph Casino against Otto Swingler that I just described. Um, so I will ask each of the parties complainant to then respondent to simply announce themselves, state your name um, as appearing. Um, and then I'm going to uh, describe our final hearing procedures. So first, complainant, um, if you could announce yourself and state your name. Uh, complainant here, uh, Joseph Casino. Hello, thank you for being here. And respondent, if you could announce yourself, please. Yeah, hi, uh, Otto Swingler here. All right, thank you both very much for being here. Um, I'm going to do a overview of the procedures. Um, I believe that each of you prior to the final hearing received a copy of the rules of the commission um, and how we conduct these hearings and uh, an outline of what those procedures are. But for the benefit um, of everyone here, um, I will do a walkthrough. So this is a final hearing under city code section 2745, which uh, sets forth our procedures. The signed complaint against Otto Swingler was filed with the city clerk in accordance with section 2741, with the exception of the identification of a date on one of the violation forms or pages. A preliminary hearing was previously held where the commission determined that reasonable grounds may exist to believe that a violation within the commission's jurisdiction did occur and proceed to a final hearing. The issue at the final hearing is whether a violation within the commission's jurisdiction has occurred. The complainant carries the burden of proof to establish a violation. The commission will make its decision based on the preponderance of the credible evidence presented by the party. The commission will also consider the admissions, if any, of the respondent swingler. If the respondent agrees that a violation has occurred, the respondent may so state and the commission may consider the appropriate sanction or prosecution. The complainant has the right to open and close the presentation of evidence and argument. Respondent may, but is not required to present an argument, present evidence and argument supporting its defense. The complainant may be permitted to present a rebuttal evidence on any defense raised in the first respondent's presentation. The chair has the option of allowing the parties to present short closing statements summarizing the evidence and what the parties believe the evidence proved or failed to prove. We're going to begin with opening statements. The complainant is going to be allowed 10 minutes to address and explain all the allegations in the complaint. The respondent or counsel would be allowed 10 minutes to respond. And all witnesses, the complaint and respondent, must make their statements under oath. The commission may also ask questions of the complainant, respondent, or any other witnesses present. Um, the parties are instructed to respond to questions and to re refrain from interjecting comments or interrupting the commissioners or the other party's presentation of evidence. The chair requests that uh, any questions um, not lead a witness. We actually don't have witnesses, I don't believe, so I'm gonna skip that part. Um, and then after the presentation of evidence, the commission will deliberate and come to a decision. And then if a commission determines that one or more of the violations has occurred, the commission is going to state the commission's findings in writings um, and then identify each code section or charter provision that has been violated. And if we determine that a violation has occurred, um, we'll proceed to a determination of appropriate sanctions in accordance with city code section 2-7-48 and 2-7-49. Um, so uh, unless there are any questions, we'll proceed to the opening statement. I did want to kind of make a brief comment before we do go to the opening statements is just big picture how um, the proceedings going to go. So 10 minutes for the complainant, 10 minutes for the respondent. It is your choice to on how you use that time. As I explained, there's opportunity for a rebuttal. Um, if you wanted to 
save some of your time to have additional comments at the end of one of the presentations. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll open the floor for commissioners to have a Q&A period. Um, I'm going to respectfully ask, it's not a written requirement in our rules, but I'm going to respectfully ask that we limit it to about 20 minutes. And I'm going to ask our timekeeper to kind of hold us to that. Um, and then after our Q&A period, um, I will ask if we have any more questions. And I'll give a reasonable amount of time for people to think really hard. Um, but then we'll move to deliberations, at which point questions for the parties are going to be over. And we'll discuss, uh, that'll be the time where we can openly discuss this complaint and any motions we might want to make. Crystal clear. Any questions um, before we jump in? And questions from the parties to uh, procedural questions. Happy to take those too. Okay. Seeing and hearing none, then I'm going to recognize the complainant, Mr. Casino. If you want to state your name again, um, and then whenever you get started with your statement, I believe our secretary will start a timer for 10 minutes. So whenever you are ready, Mr. Casino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is Joe Casino, the complainant. Uh, appreciate you and all the members uh, of this commission um, taking this up and um, giving it the seriousness that it requires. Um, I won't take 10 minutes. I probably won't even take five at risk of beating the dead horse. But, um, you know, in, in my view, a GoFundMe was set up with the intent of raising um, $30,000 for pro prop B billboards um, on this site. Uh, there was no disclosure statement and donors were listed as anonymous. Um, this is an apparent violation of sections 2-2-32 and 2-2-33 of the city's codes, campaign finance and state law. Um, this GoFundMe was deactivated by the organizer after reaching its $30,000 goal. Um, so I, as, as I know the committee asked me to try and make a good faith effort um, to find a copy of that original uh, page, which I, I did, uh, but I was not able to, um, to to find it, but I did make the effort for sure. Um, but nonetheless, um, there is a screenshot which I've submitted um, as evidence that shows that the $30,000 goal was raised, but that the fundraiser was um, deactivated. Um, and though now 404, um, if it's Googled, the description still says that the lead organizer, Mr. Swingler, sunk $10,000 of his own unreported money into the project. Um, at the hearing last month, it was claimed that the money raised uh, was donated to Save Austin Now in Mr. Swingler's name um, on the advice of counsel. Um, uh, I, have I have attached um, Save Austin Now's last report, which was filed on April the 23rd. Uh, Mr. Swingler's name is on page 190, um, listed as having donated, uh, I believe, $9,844. Which um, wouldn't account for the other thirty thousand that um, that screenshot alleges was, or, or I mean, states was raised, um, and uh, would would also just add. I mean, that also is close to ten thousand um, dollars. Maybe that's what Mr. Swingler was referring to. If Mr. Swingler can produce uh, the the names and occupations of all the people who had donated. Um, you know, in, in um, to the GoFundMe um, in his evidence, which uh, was not shared with me beforehand for reasons I don't really understand. Um, but nonetheless, um, um, I mean, that money I think should have been returned to its donors, full stop. Um, you know, and there were some contradictory answers uh, that both Mr. Swingler and his counsel gave last time around as to whether or not he donated to the GoFundMe himself, himself and as to whether or not it was expressed advocacy. Um, he admitted to having written that he had donated $10,000, um, but stated that it was a lie as a marketing ploy. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, we just kind of need, need to know where the $30,000 number comes from, where that money went. Um, and I mean, I, I think that, you know, um, I mean, I, I have submitted evidence, um, all that has been requested of me, um, you know, uh, Again, the $9,844 on page 190 that Mr. Swingler's donation was, um, you know, the screenshot that states that $30,000 goal had been raised, um, the line that states he had spent $10,000 of his own money, 
And um, I also included the link to the GoFundMe terms of service as requested. Um, but also just to kind of save money, or save time, excuse me, um, for everybody reading it. Um, you know, the one line I could find about political contributions uh, was, quote, you will comply with all relevant and applicable law and financial reporting obligations, including but not limited laws and regulations relating to registration, tax reporting, political contributions, and asset disclosures for your project. Um, by Mr. Swingler's own admission last time around, um, he believed that, you know, um, you know, and he, on the advice of counsel, was going to turn over the, the names and, and the donations to Save Austin now. Um, if that had happened again, it remains yet to be seen. But like, even so, um, it was in violation of, of the GoFundMe terms of service. So um, that's really all I have to say. I mean, we've, we've discussed this for a very long time and, um, you know, I look forward to, to further discussion on this issue. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Casino. Um, now, uh, let's uh, just get from the secretary how much time is remaining in case you want to use it. Uh, briefly unmute yourself, Secretary Lerner. Just, uh, give us a minute, uh, roughly. Sorry, 522 is left. 522 left, okay. Thank you so much. And now um, for the respondent, um, if you could state your name, introduce yourself, and then uh, feel free to begin your 10 minutes of statement whenever you like, and the secretary will keep the time. So it is to you, respondent. Sure. Yeah, this is uh, Otto Swingler. And um, yeah, I uh, would just respond that the disclosure statement, I guess kind of going down the, the list of what uh, Joe mentioned the disclosure statement um, wouldn't have been put on the GoFundMe because um, the uh, th that wasn't political advertising. Period. So th no disclosure statement is needed. I, I don't think that that the GoFundMe has anything to do with two two thirty three. There was a very clear um, disclosure statement put on the billboards uh, that said, you know, we, that was, that, that, this whole this whole. Um, thing is predicated on trying to follow the uh, very complicated uh, political contribution laws that I found out were in place, you know, kind of halfway through raising this money on GoFundMe. And so I went to painstaking efforts, coordinating with the Save Us and Now Council to make sure we followed the rules. The fact that we still did not follow the rules, I, I frankly am, am perplexed. Um, we, you know, made sure that all the money that was raised was given to Save Austin Now. Save Austin Now put, you know, political advertising paid for by Save Austin Now. They listed the treasurer's name. It was on every single one of the billboards. There was, you know, 25 of these around town. Um, <clears throat> the reason that no of the, none of the donors on my GoFundMe page were listed until after this, um, you know, these all these calls was I was the one who donated the money to Save Austin Now. Um, I provided Lynn with uh, proof of the receipt of like, like my receipt of um, the money that was raised. And I think it was like 29,700 Lynn can certainly confirm or, or share the, share the, um, uh, you know, share what I sent her if she wants. Um, and that matches, I think, I think it's off by a few hundred bucks and I'm not quite sure why, but um, it matches very closely to the exact uh, donor uh, contribution total uh, that I provided Save Austin now back in uh, either late May or early June. I can't remember when, but um, the the all the donors' names, address, places of work, amounts contributed were all tracked. Um, so that's been shared with with Lynn as well. Um, so I guess from my perspective, you know, started to go fund me as a concerned citizen. I've never been politically active period, thought this was a very important, you know, not a lot of attention gets raised to these local elections. Um, and, and frankly, there's just not, not a lot of voter turnout, um, typically speaking. Um, I, you know, I, this has been a painstaking process. I'm $2,500 into this with my attorney, which is why he's not on this call anymore, because it's been a very costly from a time perspective and um, just dollars to, to, you know, I, I feel like I did absolutely nothing wrong. And we went to great lengths to try to make sure that all the billboards had the disclosure statement that was needed. 
Um, you know, I donated through the Save Austin Now portal all the money that I had raised. You know, when asked, I immediately gave all the names from the GoFundMe to Save Austin Now um, over six weeks ago, seven weeks ago at this point. Um, those names and the amounts have been shared with Lent uh, as requested. Um, you know, quite, quite honestly, I'm not exactly sure. You know, we're in the 12th hour of talking about this. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what I did wrong. So I, I guess I would just uh, ask, ask the group. Um, you know, I, I sort of feel like I'm being penalized for wanting to be an active member of the, the city I grew up in. And, you know, quite frankly, it's very unmotivating to ever participate in a city election, you know, period going forward. So I, I guess I would just ask for someone to tell me, hey, what, what did I, what did I really do wrong here? Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Mr. Swingler. Um, Secretary Lerner, what is the time left if we want uh, time for closing group? But okay, five. Five fifty-five. Thank you so much. All right. Um, so I'll give a brief opportunity, uh, Mr. Casino, if you want a, a rebuttal time. You have five minutes and twenty-two seconds left. Um, or we can proceed straight to Q and A, and then. Uh, if you if you do offer a rebuttal, Mr. Casino, I'm going to give Mr. Swingler an opportunity to kind of close out that time. But um, just wanted to give it to you, Mr. Casino. Any any additional statements and rebuttal? Sure. I mean, I would just um, briefly add that um, I mean it was very clearly a political ad and statement. I mean, the title of the page was. Um, reinstate Austin camping ban, save our city, which was the issue on the ballot of Prop B. I believe that required um, some sort of disclosure statement. And, you know, I mean, just to read again, section 2-2-32, section A says that a person who makes one or more direct campaign expenditures in a city election that an aggregate meet or exceed $500 shall report, you know, full name and address of the person. Um, you know, if the person who makes the expenditure is an individual, it's their occupation and employer their full name and address, all, all of that. I mean, it's all it's all in the code. And I mean, even if it was in Mr. Swingler's name, then, you know, uh, I mean, it, 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 it needed to have the, I mean, I'm sure more people, people donated over $500, you know, I mean, it, it just, it just, I, I don't think it's in line with, with the code. So that's all I would have to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, then, Mr. Swingler, I'll give you an opportunity. You have about sure. six minutes. Yeah, and, and this is the specific violation that I believe I'm absolutely most clear on. Um, we spent no money, period, creating a free to make GoFundMe page. And so I want to be really clear that the, the, the reason that you want to have a disclosure statement is you don't want, you know, one very wealthy or extraordinarily wealthy citizen or individual or company to be able to sway elections. And I totally get that. Um, it wouldn't, wouldn't be fair for, for a billionaire to just paint every building, you know, yes, vote this way. Uh, and I understand why the disclosure would be needed. That is for when you're spending money though, just to be crystal clear. If I, if I want to go scream on every corner of the street, who I think people should vote for, that's free speech. GoFundMe charged me zero dollars to, to create this, uh, it wasn't an ad, it was a, uh, a request to raise money. So first of all, it wasn't an ad. Second of all, uh, we didn't spend any money. So no dis the disclosure statement is specifically for when you're spending money for political uh, advertisement. And so since we spent zero dollars, we are both myself and uh, the attorney that was helping me with this, we are crystal clear that we did not violate this Mr. Swingler, are you still there? It sounds like you got a you got a little cut off. Oh, oh there you are. I was trying to follow the rules on on this. I donated to Save Austin Now, and they put the disclosure statement that they needed to have since they purchased the billboards um, and put them on, you know, on there. And we tried to follow the rules. So I, I don't I don't know that Joe, you're quite understanding the the code there because no money was was spent. Um, that's the only reason the disclosure statements needed. I can make a free sign and stand on the street corner with it. And there's certainly no disclosure statement needed. Um, I don't view a free posting 
just like a Facebook post or an Instagram or a tweet or a GoFundMe post. It's free to create. There's no disclosure statement uh, needed to do that. But I'm done. Save my time for later. Okay. Well, that is, so I appreciate that. Um, so uh, those are the statements. And now I'm going to open it up for Q&A um, from our commissioners. So like I said, commissioners, I'm going to set aside about 20 minutes. It's about 7.24 now. I'll try to keep an eye on the clock myself. I'm going to rely on my secretary to do most of the timekeeping. It doesn't have to be precisely 20 minutes. Um, it's just uh, a friendly request. And I see Commissioner Greenberg with her hand up first. So Commissioner Greenberg, go ahead. So I have questions for Mr. Swingler. Um, the GoFundMe terms of service say um, under the campaign organizer, you as a campaign organizer represent warrant and covenant that all information you provide in connection with the campaign or beneficiary is accurate, complete, and not likely to deceive reasonable users. Did you adhere to that requirement? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I didn't read the GoFundMe um, uh, rules and regulations as I'm positive that the vast majority of people that have ever used GoFundMe have not read them. But um, I, I think that that the majority of what I wrote was from my heart that, hey, you know, this is a big deal to our city. Um, this this law that the council had overturned without voter approval has, has quite frankly ruined it over the past 18 months. Like, let's do something about this. Let's let's raise some money and let's put these billboards up and let's just try to get people to the polls. You know, I'm sure certain that people. But that's to... more than I asked. Oh, okay. Got it. Sorry, but um, with only 20 minutes for Q and A, I think we want to just stick to answering the questions. Did the go? Is my is my you know reading of of detailed you know 30 page disclosure language on GoFundMe relevant to this? Just to be clear. Well, I'm just asking. This 20 minutes. I'm just so asking. No, nobody's read the disclosure statement on GoFundMe since it, since it was written. I mean, come on. You're the one who brought up the disclosure statement when you said that the contributions were the personal property of you, the recipient. So yes, we did look at it. But my concern is that the page specifically mentioned that you had spent your own money for artwork and vinyl. Um, mm -hmm. Was that accurate, complete, and not likely to deceive reasonable users? Well, Betsy, is, as I explained specifically on our last six hour call, the second six hour call, I very specifically use that as the marketing ploy to say, hey, I'm going to get this going. Like we've got a little bit of uh, wind in our sails. Like, we, you know, we're kind of kickstarting this. Um, I, I very specifically no? addressed this. That's absolutely correct. I did not, did not spend any money. Um, I, I wrote that as like, hey, if we don't get anything going, I'm probably just going to write this check for 10 grand myself and be happy to do that for a great cause. Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, so GoFundMe says that 29640 was raised. The deposits totaled 2998. But the contributions on Save Austin Now finance report shows $9,844 from Otto Swingler. So what happened to the rest of the money? Uh, it was all donated to Save Austin Now, and they can confirm that. That's not my responsibility to do. What? But it was all, it I'll confirm under oath that I donated all the money to Save Austin Now per the spreadsheet I provided with Lynn. Under your own name? On Monday. Under yeah, your own under, name? That's correct, yeah. Okay, do you know who Eric Swingler is? Uh, Eric is my middle name. That's probably me. I don't know if I typed in the boxes wrong, but. But Eric lives at a different unit? No, Eric is my literally my middle name. It's on my driver's license. Okay. You know, I don't, and, you know, but. My last question is Kendall Brown and John Henry Swingler are listed on the GoFundMe page as members of the fund fundraising team. You know who those are as well, right? Yeah, I added them as ad administrators to like, you know, help out. They didn't ask to be involved or want to be involved. They had no choice. I just sort of added them on there. So it wasn't really their thing. So they were part of the fundraising team. They, they were absolutely not, is what I just said. You, you okay. just click a button and you can add whoever you want to it. I just added, you know, my brother and my girlfriend. That's that, that's my relationship with those two people. 
So again, about the accuracy, completeness, and not likely to deceive reasonable users. What, what Marketing about that? employees, names that aren't really part of the team. What does that mean? I added my girlfriend and my brother to the GoFundMe page in order for them to, you know, help like spread the word. Um, you know, they didn't ask to be involved. They're, okay. You know, like my two closest people to me. I, I don't. I don't understand the point of nature of this question, and you're painting me in a corner. Look, I'm. I'm a. I was a concerned citizen who raised some money. Halfway through raising the money, donated it to Save Austin Now to try to follow the rules. I mean, to, to try to pin me as somebody who maliciously didn't follow the you know 19 pages of of eight point font in the GoFundMe paragraph is just ridiculous. I, I can't quite understand why we would even spend a second on this subject. Sure. So I'm I mean, gonna, if, if anybody's used GoFundMe, they know how this, it works. Like you so just, Mr. Swindler, okay, thank those. you. Uh, I'm going to just jump in real quick. Um, I want to make two comments. One is that um, I hope that the questions and answers are respectful from commissioners and parties alike. And two, um, just as a general line of inquiry, I'm not sure that um, uh, questioning whether or not a party's complied with the terms of services on a website is um, particularly relevant. We don't have like a super strict evidentiary relevance rule, but um, you know, I, I just want to have that, have us be mindful of that moving forward. With that, I see Commissioner Kale, and then I'll yeah. go to Commissioner Danberg. So, Commissioner Kale. Um, I just, I have one um, quick question for Mr. Swingler. Um, I was wondering um, why, instead of like making one large contribution to Save Austin Now, it's in several chunks. Sure. Yeah, I'd be happy to explain that. Um, we, initially when this was going to be my thing and, and with no involvement of save austin now which was you know of course the original intent the reason i the only reason to give the money to save austin now was in an intention to try to follow the rules you know somebody let me know hey you've got to put disclosure statements on this stuff and then realizing that oh if you if you buy something that costs more than 500 bucks you've got to create a pack and that costs a lot of money it's a bunch of paperwork it's a bunch of time i was kind of like gosh i don't I don't know how to do that. This is ridiculous. I can't believe how much work goes into creating this political action committee. I'm just trying to buy a few billboards from my friends that wanted to, to buy them. I'm like, why can't we just buy this, you know? So we, we painstakingly tried to follow the rules. I donated all the money to Save Austin Now. There was three different um, purchases of billboards. One uh, one was with a with one company the other one was with a different company. We had a third that was uh, with a different company. So we, we had three different purchases. That's why it was donated in different um, like chunks, I guess. And so, Save Austin now can confirm all that and you know, so, obviously I'm under oath. Yep, and when you said we had three different purchases, who whom are you referring to as we? Like Save Austin now and myself, I guess, just trying to coordinate to follow the rules, you know? Like I was kind of like, hey, I raised this money. I want to buy these billboards. Um, you know, if I donated Save Austin Now and then Save Austin Now puts all the correct political, uh, you know, disclosure statements on the billboards, we, we thought we were following the rules. And quite frankly, like the reason I wouldn't have given my donors names, you know, the vast majority of these were on, um, the majority of these were on the GoFundMe, but even the anonymous ones are, are included in my spreadsheet because myself as the administrator had access to that. Um, but the, the reason I wouldn't have donated their names is they were, they didn't donate money to Save Austin Now. So like through the portal that Save Austin Save. Now raised money through, I was the only one like, you know, giving, you know, giving money to them. So that, I guess we thought we were covered, but, um, you know, they, they've obviously had the list of names as of a couple months ago. Does that answer your question? Um, it actually... It actually kind of raised a couple of other questions for me. I'm sure. sort of Googling through the finance report and I guess I was wondering about the timing. I'm sure I can find the dates in the report. Um, the coordination level between you and Save Austin Now, when Save Austin Now was purchasing those billboards. <laughs> what was the level of coordination um, on those different chunks of payments to Save Austin Now? Um, it was a phone call that, uh, you know, I basically said, hey, guys, like, can I heard that there's this pack I need to form. No idea how to do that. No interest in doing that. 
don't want to spend the money to do that or the time, can I just donate this money to y'all and we all we all put it towards billboards? I think this is a great idea. And they were like, yeah, sure. You know, if you're if you're if you've already raised the money for it, you know, give it to us. We'll handle the you know the political action committee part of it, and we'll put our pack name on the billboard so that we follow the rules. I mean, that that was the whole point of doing this was to follow the rules quite frankly so it's just sort of like i can't believe that um that i'm spending all this time and effort and energy and money to uh, you know we we thought we did this for the pure purpose of, of following the rules so, so, so much very, very little coordination just to be crystal clear that i answered your question i mean okay. I called, called them donated the money they contracted with the billboard companies you know I, there's not a whole lot to do so, so my question then is, and I'm sorry about my dogs, they're really obnoxious. Um, uh, my question is, so it looks like um, you made a donation on March 30th and Kendall Brown made a donation on March, you made yours of 9,844, Kendall Brown made hers on March 30th of 7,156 and then Eric Swindler, that being you again, made one on ten uh, on uh, April sixth of ten thousand three hundred forty-five. So, what was um, was the GoFundMe? Uh, when did the GoFundMe close down, and was it running in tandem with this, with these three donations that I that I spotted to Save Austin now? So when did when did your GoFundMe officially shut down? I guess maybe that probably that date is in some of the information, and I I just wanted to ask. You know, you. I I don't know if anybody has that date, including myself. I mean, we, as soon as we raised the money, there was kind of like no real need to continue raising more. So I th the goal of shutting it down was to, to stop the money coming in. I mean, we we raised thirty grand in like forty eight or you know, four days. You know, I. I only had originally like seventeen thousand dollars worth of billboards to buy. I was frankly worried that we weren't going to be able to put the money to work, so we we closed the GoFundMe to avoid raising additional money. You know, obviously there was immense voter turnout, immense interest in the subject, so I, I was kind of worried. Hey, if we get up to fifty or sixty thousand dollars in another week, where are we going to put the money? You know, like I don't know what to do. So we that's the reason to shut it down. The reason for it to, for it being an Eric Swingler, just to be crystal clear, that was my uh, there's no trickery going on. My, my yeah. debit card literally says Eric Auto Swingler. My credit card says Auto Foreman Swingler. I have two middle right. names. Eric is my legal. Eric was my legal first name. I've always gone by Auto. When I was in college, I changed it from Auto or from Eric to Auto. Some of my driver's license stuff or my, you know, it's there's, I just put down on the form what you know card I used. And um, Kindle. Uh, now that you bring that up. Kindle's, you know, she's my roommate and my girlfriend. We, we live together. I may have used her card because my credit card was maxed out. I mean, a $10,000 donation, I needed to, like, use her card to, to make the donation. And then I, I think a VIN motor or wrote her a check or something, you know, whenever my card wasn't, wasn't filled up. Yeah, and I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to ask personal questions or anything like that. I'm just kind of trying to figure out the, you know, sort of the timing between the GoFundMe and Save Austin now. Yeah, and, and I think you actually may have answered, uh, Mary, you may have answered Joe's question or, or, or maybe even Betsy's question. Those those three amounts, it sounds like you, you might have them more accessible than me, but it was like 10,000, 9,000, and 7,000. Did I hear you right? Yes. Pretty close. I think it's in the $28,000, $29,000 range, plus or minus. You know, there may have been, you know, 1,500 bucks that I, I made various other $1,000 personal donations to Save Austin Now and whatever I had left over. Uh, from this, I, I certainly donated the remainder plus, you know, two or three thousand of my own money. So I, I, I certainly gave. You can go through the the records. I, you know, I, I certainly gave over the over the thirty thousand dollars that I raised uh, to Save Austin. Now, you know, like I, I gave those three donations you're referring to plus two or three other like thousand or fifteen hundred dollar donations because it was something I cared a lot about. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Danberg. Yeah, for, first, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of settled down, but I just want to say to Mr. Casino and Mr. Swingler and everybody else who comes here, 
if we're asking a question, that does not mean we're accusing anybody. We really are just trying to get info. Um, so on that point, I have two questions. Does GoFundMe hold back any of the money as any kind of a fee or convenience cost or whatever? And then the other question is, well, let me, let me just ask that first and I'll ask the other one in a minute. Does GoFundMe hold back any portion of the donations? As I had, I had one do, I had one donation in like the three or four hundred dollar range. And this may be why my spreadsheet is slightly off by like two or three hundred bucks from the um, from the amount in my uh, checking account screenshot that I shared. So the checking account screenshot I think is like four hundred dollars less than the spreadsheet I showed, you know, it's 29,600 instead of 29,200 or whatever the math shakes out, y'all have the info. But uh, one of my donors, I think, saw the credit card statement and thought it was a fraudulent charge. So she disputed it. And so GoFundMe returned her money. I had already spent it and donated to Save Austin Now. So that was, I think, why my numbers were off. Uh, but I didn't pay anything to be, to, to um, I didn't pay a fee or anything like that to list something on GoFundMe. Okay. You, can, you can ask a follow-up, Commissioner Amber. go ahead. Okay, and then, then my, uh, my other question, uh, Mr. Swingler, do you know what a bundler is and do you think of yourself as one? Uh, I, I, I would need the definition. I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay, uh, so I have Commissioner Levin's hand next, I think. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, a couple questions for Mr. Casino. Um, can you identify a single direct campaign expenditure that Mr. Swingler made? Well, uh, by his own admission, um, you know, say he, I mean, had been electioneering and making expenditures to help pass Prop B. You know, what? what uh, could you define that? What can, did I do? Um, no, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna ask you not to interject or interrupt or ask questions. It's um, for commissioners to ask and for parties identify to answer. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Levin. So Mr. Casino, your allegation, one of them, is that Mr. Swingler violated 2-2-32, right? Yes, sir. Which is, which, uh, is about reporting direct campaign expenditures, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. And do you have any any... Can you identify one expenditure that Mr. Swingler made, one direct campaign expenditure as it's defined in the code that you allege he violated? Well, I mean, he donated, which is an expenditure. So you think that a contribution is, an, is a direct campaign expenditure? I mean, if, yes, I do. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, do you contend that uh, Mr. Swingler actually himself purchased any billboards? Yes or no? Uh, yes, sir, I do. He himself purchased it? Uh, yes, sir, I do. And how much did he pay for that? $17,000. Uh, I mean, like, it was $10,000. I mean, he oh. said that by his own admission in the, um, I mean, that, that's listed in my evidence, but $10,000, yes, sir. Okay, and to and whom he did he pay that? that? Well, he also had um, coordinated that on the phone with Save Austin Now. Okay, says. but that's not him making the expenditure. That's Save Austin now. Do you agree with that? Uh, right. No, sir, I don't. So you think that when a, con a contributor direct. gives money to a PAC and the PAC spends that money, the contributor is making a direct campaign expenditure? Well, I mean, he did, he directly asked them to make that expenditure. So, yes, I would say that he was making that direction. And that That's not what I asked, Mr. Casino. It's not, it, he oh, gave the money to Save Austin now. Do you agree that that's true? Um, yes, I do. But okay, I and then and then let me. Uh, you've answered my question. I, I I don't have a ton of time here. And then Save Austin now paid for the billboard. True or false? Um, I mean, it, it it seems as such. Yes, sir. Okay, and you are you're telling this commission that that situation right there is Mr. Swingler making a direct campaign expenditure. Yes, sir. I am. Okay, because that's that's good to know. He coordinated with them, and that is why I contend that. By his own admission. 
Okay. That's all I've got. Thank you. All right. Uh, see, Secretary Lerner and commissioners, I just want everyone to know I'm not going to be hyper strict. I know that we are coming up on about 20 minutes, but I'm going to be a little bit lenient on that time limit. But Secretary Lerner, go ahead. Okay. Just real quick, just following on um, uh, Commissioner Levin's line of questioning. So, so Mr. Casino, if if the if Dave Austin now had said, you know what, billboards aren't effective, we're gonna we're gonna do radio ads. How where would you fall on this? Well, I mean, it's the it's the same sort of thing. I mean, at at, at the end of the day, I mean, um, you know, I mean, he had coordinated with them, you know, um, and he had it was it was his. Um, and his donation is an expenditure. But if he, but if he, so what I'm hearing you say is operative. I think the operative element, what I'm hearing from you is that he gave the money for an express purpose that save Austin now, almost like he's contracting save Austin now to do something that he wants. Yes, ma'am. If, would it be different for you if he just said, Hey, save us now, here's money. We raise money and we want this to go toward at prop B advocacy um even even so i mean that's still electioneering which um would fit up um, under definitions that would violate the city code and if he just said hey save us now i like what you're doing here's thirty thousand dollars do what you want with it uh, um no i mean I, I i would i would um still say at at the end of the day um that you know it was it was it was electioneering and um uh, even if he didn't mention prop b is what i'm saying i mean I'm just trying to I would also add that Prop B is, is mentioned, um, you know, on on the fundraiser itself. But I also think that he wouldn't solicit, um, you know, any of his own money. Um, so I think the operative question here is about how much of this donation was for an express electioneering purpose, and so because it. The billboards. I'm hearing you say that because he asked for billboards, and billboards were were what happened. Yeah, to you. That's the direct connection. Yes, that 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 I would add is direct connection to Save Austin now, and would, Thank would you. qualify as an expenditure. Amendment. Okay, just for a time check, just want everyone to know we passed 20 minutes. I'm going to put another 10 minutes on the clock. Sure. Well, I was going to. Uh, I saw Commissioner Danberg's hand, um, and then I was going to. After Commissioner Danberg's question, I was going to make a final call for questions. So I'll go to Commissioner Danberg for a question, and then I'll do around to see if anyone else has a final question. Go ahead. I appreciate it. And this is something that after many, many, many years of being involved in this, I'm still not quite sure what I think of it. I would like to ask both the complainant and the respondent what they think about the level of coordination. Uh, would you like me to go first, Commissioner? Sure. All right, well, um, I mean, he, Mr. Swingler, um, you know, had multiple phone calls um, with them, which he had admitted. And, you know, I mean, just the, the important point is that, that I just want to get back to is that he raised $30,000, which was not all of his, um, and he solicited funds and to coordinate with Save Austin now. And I mean, so that's, I would, I would say that that was a high level of coordination. Uh, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Amber, Swingler. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I would say there is uh, very little to none coordination since I was the one coordinating it. I probably should be the one to answer this question, um, as opposed to Joe's speculation on the subject. The, uh, the the entire GoFundMe was very clearly me trying to raise money to 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 buy these billboards. I, I as I've stated twice on this call and and and, on, and both of the other uh, previous calls. I, I found out that hey, there's there's these rules to follow, and you have to create a pack if it's over 500 bucks. Found that out. I was it was suggested to me to call Save Boston now and go through their pack. You know, like hey, try to follow the rules. You know, go go donate the money to the pack that is literally set up to handle this subject, Prop B, that we were raising money to advocate for. So, you know, uh, I, I I guess I. 
I am confused as to why there'd be speculation other than, you know, what I just said, hey, I called them, donated the money, they contracted for some billboards. You know, we, we thought we were following all the rules. I'm not quite sure how could, there could be speculation that there was more than a call because I, I previously stated on, on this phone call that that's, that was the level of coordination. And I think State of Austin now would say the same thing, that those were the two parties involved, you know, my, myself and State of Austin now. Thank you both. All right, commissioners, I'm gonna do, uh, if anyone has a burning additional question they would like to ask one of the parties, the floor is open now um, for a final question. Okay, I'm not seeing any takers. Um, okay, then the hearing is gonna be closed and so we are gonna proceed with deliberations. So at this point, no more additional questions to the witnesses, or sorry, to the parties, um, and the parties uh, are instructed politely not to interject as we do these deliberations. Um, so this is where we discuss amongst ourselves, commissioners, and it's uh, also a time where we would be making motions. So with that, the floor is open for discussion or motions. I will jump in if there aren't any media takers and just briefly comment um, that our, just want to describe for the edification of our the parties that have given a lot of their time to this process um, and that decided to, you know, show up here today, um, that what we're doing right now is simply getting information to find out whether or not a violation has occurred. There's no presumption um, of guilt one way or another. Um, I know that it's a, it can be kind of a grueling process and sometimes a frustrating process, but I wanna uh, at least speak on behalf of the commission. I've got pretty good faith that no one comes in with a preconceived notion or a, you know, moving to a desired outcome based on anything other than what the evidence is in front of us. Um, and I just wanted to thank the parties again for their patience. I know it's been a long time and there have been long hearings. Um, so I saw I saw Commissioner Greenberg's hand and then I'll go to Commissioner Stanton. So I saw your hand uh, right as I was jumping in. So go ahead, Commissioner Greenberg. Thank you. Um, so for me, what I see is the money was collected specifically for the purpose of putting up billboards to um, in favor of Proposition B, and expenditures were made to put those billboards up. Um, passing the money to save Austin now does not really, in my mind, change that essential fact. And what was kind of surprising to me today was hearing Mr. Swingler repeatedly use the word we. First, he said, we made sure that the disclosures were on the billboard. We made three purchases. Um, to me, that sounds like expenditures, whether it was put into the money put into um, Save Austin Now, so Save Austin Now could technically make the purchases. It still seems like the respondent planned it, made the purchases, said $17,000. There's an express $17,000 purchase for billboards in the um, Save Austin Now disclosure. It was all planned and the difference is, is really just a technicality in my mind. And um, that's all I wanna say right now. Uh, sure. I'll. Um... I'll, I'll pass. I saw Commissioner Stanton's hand and then Commissioner Levinson. What I want to uh, just briefly say for the sake of commissioners' uh, deliberations, um, one thing to bear in mind is that a direct campaign expenditure is one that is made without coordination. Um, and that is specifically what's being alleged in the complaint. Um, and with that, I'll turn to Commissioner Stanton and then Commissioner Levinson. So Commissioner Stanton, go ahead. 
Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to reiterate um, your statement to uh, to the parties involved here and to thank them for their time and their effort. And I also wanted to um, state that from my perspective, and I, I think that uh, I could probably speak for others on the commission as well, which is um, uh, Mr. Swingler and Mr. Casino, please do not uh, interpret uh, this any decisions as a judgment of your character. That is certainly not, um, it, it is just, from my perspective, we are just deciding whether um, a violation of code has occurred. Um, this is not a reflection on either um, character of either of you. So please um, keep that in mind. Thank you, that's all that I have to say right now. Okay, uh, Commissioner Levins, go ahead. Yeah. And Commissioner Greenberg, I just want to see if I understand your position. I, what I'm hearing from you is that you're uncomfortable with the level of coordination between Mr. Swingler and Save Austin now. If I'm hearing that wrong, obviously correct me. Um, and that, you know, if, if you're uncomfortable not, with that, I'm sorry. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, as part of deliberation to see if I understand your. It's, your, it's, um, not so much the coordination as the specifically um, basic, basically just passing the money through to do what he always intended to do. And to provide the disclosures needed specifically. Uh, Mr. Swingler, uh, Mr. Swingler, please, uh, uh, as I instructed you earlier, please don't interject. Um, it's commissioner's <laughs> deliberation at this point. Um, and uh, thank you. Uh, so, Commissioner Greenberg, if you had a further answer, or Commissioner Levin, if you had further comment, go ahead. Um, I wanted, if, if you're finished with that, Commissioner Greenberg, I had kind of a follow-up question, which is, is that level of coordination, or, or even if it's directly, Mr. Swingler says, Save Austin Now, here's X dollars, I want you to spend it on billboards, and Save Austin Now turns around and spends it on billboards. Is that prohibited by 2-2-32? That's not my point. My point is he just did what he always planned to do. Is that a violation? So it, I, I'm trying to understand if you're making the contention that in doing so, Mr. Swingler violated a part of the finance code or that it's just something that you're not uh, particularly pleased about, which is fair enough. I'm not criticizing that. I'm just wanting to understand what you're I do believe he violated part of the finance code. I believe that he collected money for the purpose of, you know, for a ballot measure. And that was more than $500. There was no campaign treasurer appointed. There was no PAC paperwork set up. There were no campaign <laughs> finance reports. So if you're asking me, do I think he violated campaign finance? Law, the answer in my mind is yes. Okay, and that, I guess to me, that's fair enough, perhaps so, but- It's not Swingler, what the allegation is. Yeah, that that's, you and I, I think are, are, at least on that point, are on the same page, that if it's a violation, it's not a violation of 2232. That's all I have for now, at least. Because it's a contribution, not an expenditure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, uh, commissioners, any other, uh, floor is open, so um, I'm just looking for hands. Um, let's see, Commissioner Danberg. I, I'm, I think I'm in line with Commissioner Lovins and Commissioner Greenberg that Mr. Swingler did as best as he noted knew to do and that uh save austin now did coordinate with him but how in the heck would he have known those rules it's Commissioner Greenberg, if you want to. Uh, I was just going to say, it doesn't matter how he knows the rules. The rules are the rules. 
Mm -hmm. well, I didn't I, see the speed limit sign, but I'm still expected to obey it. Sure. Um, I have a, I'll jump in quickly and just uh, observe that a few things can be true, right? Um, that one, we have rules and they are important and their complexity doesn't diminish their importance. Um, it's important that they're followed. Um, it can also be the case that someone tries their hardest uh, to figure out those rules and makes good faith efforts to comply with them. Um, and I, I mean, I think one, one thing I'm struggling with is the, the basis, the reason we are here is because based on what we heard in the preliminary hearing, um, there were reasonable grounds to think that maybe a violation occurred. Um, I can speak personally and say that uh, for me, it was the, um, the at least the <laughs> description of the GoFundMe saying, I've already spent $10,000 of my own money doing this thing. And an admission that Mr. Swingler, the respondent, was the author of that. Um, to me, that was reasonable. Those were grounds were reasonable enough to think that maybe, maybe there was a direct campaign expenditure. Um, so our purpose here is to see what evidence the parties can produce and specifically what the complainant can offer since the burden is on him to prove this uh, prove that there was a violation to see what additional evidence there is to suggest that a direct campaign expenditure occurred under 232-2-32. Um, so that is kind of where I'm stuck, um, is that I don't, we've kind of been equivocating on some really important terms on what is an expenditure uh, and um, what as you know doing something independently or doing something in coordination um i think those waters got a little unnecessarily muddied um but uh one thing that i think is pretty clear to me is that i have not yet seen um the kind of evidence that i think meets what the code says um specifically there was an expenditure for one of the one of the activities right? Um, specifically a direct campaign expenditure oh, sorry, uh, specifically um, a political advertisement, electionary communication or express advocacy um, under 2233 um, that would require some kind of disclosure statement or that uh, that anything else has met the definition of a direct campaign expenditure that would require reporting. Um, I think there was a suggestion, but uh, proof is not something that I found at this hearing. Um, but uh, again, floor is open, commissioners. Uh, I'll take any other comments, motions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. And as and as we discuss this, there's just a few things that come to my mind. I mean, the first thing is, um, as difficult as it might be or challenging as it, as it might be, I, you know, I think part of what makes this country a wonderful country to live in, as well as county and city, is that when it comes to allegations that are uh, that are affected somehow by the weight of government, that a person has to be shown to have violated the specific violations. And the specific violations here are spending, are making a, um, excuse me, what is the word I'm looking for? An expenditure, right? So either 2-32, a direct campaign expenditure, that person made the expenditure, or 2-2-33, which again requires a direct expenditure uh, that is made somehow. And so for me in framing this, the first question I'm going to ask was whether the respondent made a direct expenditure, not whether he 
called someone up and said, hey, can you make this expenditure? Not whether he bundled money and then passed that money along, but whether he himself made a direct expenditure as opposed to a contribution because the code does make a distinction. And so in framing this issue, that's, for me, that's, that's going to be uh, the bread and butter of it. And from what I've seen, there is not evidence that he himself made a direct expenditure. Now, whether or not Save Austin Now reported their contributions that they received correctly, that's another matter. Whether or not respondents should have taken some additional steps as it relates to other parts of the code, that again is a different matter. But for the issue that is before us, I kind of strain to see how a direct expenditure has been made. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, any other comments um, or discussion, commissioners? Um, oh, go ahead. I saw Commissioner Levin edit. Was that your hand? Oh, I thought it was the one. Sorry. Um, no, that's me just fidgeting. Sorry. No, that's fair. I'm I'm trying to be hypersensitive to a possible hand. Um, and so, yeah, one thing um, I'll also offer is that um, I, even if there was a, a technical violation that you could maybe divine if you interpret the right words the right way, um, it seems pretty clear to me that Mr. Swingler really did try to do, uh, to go by the book, so to speak. And deviations from by the book um, can be laid at the feet of people who should have known better. Um, so that's that's just an additional observation I wanted to make. Um, commissioners, I'm, I'm happy. I don't see much more deliberation or comments. Um, so I'm happy to entertain a motion if anyone has a motion. Commissioner McHale. Uh, I would like to entertain the motion that we um, dismiss the complaint against Mr. Swingler. Um, I don't see evidence of a direct expenditure from the GoFundMe. Real quick, let's get a second on that motion. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. And just to clarify the motion as well, um, I saw uh, Dan Burke's hand, so she'll be the second, but I want to clarify the motion as well, that it's uh, that there has not been a violation um, yeah. of the sections alleged. Right. Open violated. Okay. That's the motion by Commissioner Kale, seconded by Commissioner Danberg. Commissioner Kale, you can dis discuss the motion further. Go ahead. Well, I just, I, um, I, I'm, I like, I like to keep a pretty tight rein, you know, on, on, uh, these campaign finance issues and, um, um, try to run everything as ethically and, financially transparent as possible, but I don't see evidence of direct expenditures on Mr. Swingler's part for advocacy. Yes, he donated to Save Austin Now, and yes, they ultimately bought billboard space with those donations, but I don't see the coordination and planning that would indicate a violation has occurred. Right. Okay. Commissioners, any further discussion on this motion? Commissioner Greenberg. Um, I just want to mention, I will vote for the motion, but as I mentioned before, I do believe a violation has occurred. Um, I would encourage the um, complaining to refile and perhaps not be so specific in naming the section of the code. Um, I've seen complaints that just mention 2-2 or even 2-2 and 2-7. Which is, you know, within our jurisdiction, and if you're so specific that we have to say, well, no, there wasn't an expenditure, then we're in a position where we have to dismiss, even when it's pretty clear that there should have been a campaign treasurer 
that there should have been a filing for a PAC. Um, and, you know, someone told Mr. Swingler that. Um, but and so he gave the money to save Austin now. But I'm not real clear that that just means he didn't have a violation. I think he did. Sure. I'm going to um, respectfully ask that we keep discussion to the motion, merits of the motion. Um, and I, I kind of want to caution against any um, specific instructions to a party on how to proceed other than in advising them that they have an opportunity to uh, explore the issue further and file a subsequent complaint. I don't want to try to um, suggest how a complaint should be written or that a complaint should be vague in its allegations. Um, so I, I think Mr. Casino is apprised of the fact now that um, there may have been a problem in the eyes of the commission with this complaint and that he can uh, explore the issue further if he so chooses. Um, in discussing the motion, uh, I'll offer a quick comment as well. I think I'm going to be supporting the motion. Um, and I think that the, I think the respondent has learned that there are campaign finance rules and that they are important. Um, and, uh, but uh, for reasons I'd previously discussed, I'll be voting for the motion to dismiss. Um, any other discussion commissioners on this motion specifically? Okay, so seeing and hearing none, then I'm going to proceed to a roll call on this motion and I'm going to go in order as it appears on the agenda. I'm going to make sure that I am at the right place. Sorry, I've got just a mess of papers. Okay. All right, so please unmute yourself, um, say your vote. I'll repeat your vote back to you as confirmation, and then please subsequently mute yourself. So in the order that it appears, Chair Soberon votes aye. Vice Chair O'Hurry? Aye. Vice Chair O'Hurry votes aye. Secretary Lerner? Aye. Secretary Lerner votes aye. Commissioner Danberg? Aye. Commissioner Danberg votes aye. Commissioner Greenberg? Aye. Commissioner Greenberg votes aye. Commissioner Kale? Aye. Commissioner Kale votes aye. Commissioner Levins? Aye. Commissioner Levins votes aye. Commissioner Stanton? Aye or yes. Commissioner Stanton votes aye or yes. And Commissioner Teneyuka? Aye. And how about me? Commissioner McCormick, how could I possibly forget? Um, I know, I have the longest name. <laughs> aye. Commissioner McCormick votes aye. And the chair expresses his deep apologies for skipping over Commissioner McCormick. I believe that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten? No, that would be nine. Is that correct? Ten. Thank you so much, Lynn. Um, I didn't keep the normal tally that I have. So 10 ayes, zero nays, um, and one absent. So that motion prevails and the complaint is dismissed. Um, Mr. Casino and Mr. Swingler, thank you for your patience throughout this process. Thank you for your participation um, in the process. And um, that is all. You're, you're dismissed if you'd like to leave. Um, and We'll proceed with the rest of our meeting, but thank you very much, both of you. Okay. All right, so that is agenda item two.